something fishy is going on in this classroom. Is that if the door is open located near the middle of the fish's back? Yeah. So does that have that squared 90 degree angle dorsal fin like no. we talked about? No. no. I'm Jim. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about fish, which can't be a surprise. We're glad to be with you today. We are the friends that brought you that big tank of small friends that you've got over there. Those 350 little fingerling friends were donated by Trout Unlimited via a state grant. So here we run the Trout in the Classroom program. This is our second year in the program and what we're doing is we're raising rainbow trout to hopefully release in the spring. Along the way we learn a little bit about trout habitat, we learn about requirements for sustaining trout populations, we look at water quality, water chemistry. We're testing for high range pH and nitrite. How are trout swimming in a classroom beneficial, you ask? From this program, I really hope that my students gain an appreciation for Minnesota, our natural resources, and the outdoors. I hope they learn more about our water quality and how to better sustain our state and that um, preserving habitat. Very important lessons to learn at any age. I've been learning all about trout that I've never learned anything about before, all the stages that they go through and what kind of conditions they need and that it takes a lot of work to maintain their life. So all of the fish in the room are native to Minnesota except two. Do you know which two? Yeah. Rainbow trout. Ra yep, and? Brown trout? Yeah, rainbows and browns, we stock. The rivers and the lakes here have to be taken care of in a space where they have to have like cold, clean water and like you can't like just dump stuff into the lake because that might kill the fish. I just thought they had like the baby stage and then they just grew up and I didn't know they went through so many different cycles and that they could like, you know, they have so many different chances at living and dying. So we talked about fish adaptations, how they allow fish to live, how they live and where they live. This isn't the only classroom taking care of young trout known as PAR. This program spans the entire, across the state. We have 43 teachers in the program. Um, our furthest north school is Northam, Minnesota, north of Bemidji, and then all the way down through Winona and Rochester. And I have 30 teachers on a wait list to join the program next year. There's so much more to learn around them than just their biology or the trout themselves. They're an indicator species of clean water, clean, cold, healthy water. Um, so by bringing these into the classroom, then you're bringing nature into the classroom with the kids right in their face. All these trout, naturally, they live in moving bodies of water, right? This is nature in and out of the classroom. When springtime comes, the student caretakers release their rainbow nursery into the Vermilion River. We, uh, especially at Trout Unlimited, want kids to be really aware about cold water watersheds and fisheries, things like that. Uh, we do have a good amount of trout streams in our state. Um, not a lot of people know that though, um, and they need a lot of protection to stay clean and cold and healthy fisheries. So uh, we really want to expose those things to the students all over the state. Call it introducing a kid to the great outdoors and the importance of conservation, one classroom at a time. How can we help in our own watersheds and things that we can do? Um, there are little things that kids can do immediately in their homes that they can help with those things and just um, becoming environmental stewards in their adult life because these are the kids that are really going to, um, going to do some awesome things in the future when it comes to conservation and our natural resources.